Hey, what's going on, everybody? Frank Berry here from Tithely, uh, coming to you live, another show of Modern Church Leader, and super excited today. We're going to talk about church branding, church communications, uh, a topic that I think a lot of churches uh, could definitely benefit from, and here with uh, a resident expert who's been doing it for a long time. So I'm going to bring in our guests. And uh, hey, Mark, how's it going? Uh, it's going well, except that by you saying a long time, you almost stretched a long time, hey. a little too long. Yeah. I mean, look, you can see my gray pretty well because I let it come out a little more, but I feel like you got some going on if you, uh, so anyways. I certainly have the gray hairs to prove that I've been working in this. What is it now? It's 35 years I've been doing this. 35 years? Would you start when you were like four? Yes, that's what we'll say. <laughs> uh, well, you uh, speaking of branding and communication, man, last week, the, the church that I interviewed on the show had a great setup, great, great lighting, great camera, great mic, great background, all the things. And you you might have one up them. Uh, I feel like you've got a good. I'm assuming you're at home, but you've got a great setup at home. I am. The the home office slash home den, depending on, on who's here. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> well, it looks awesome. You spent some some time. It, like, is, are those all real things on the wall? And like... They are. It looks yeah. so good. It's not a Zoom background. No, it, it it's real. Yeah. It's one of those things where, um, I mean, this past year, certainly, but even before this past year, everybody wanted to do Zoom calls and, yeah. and that whole connection thing. So I thought if I'm going to talk to people about branding and, uh, you know, how to lock down a brand, then I better have something behind me that actually right. has the brand. Right. A hundred percent. Well, it looks awesome. You did a great job. Uh, I'll turn my lights on wherever they're at someday. Uh, <laughs> the switch is far away. Um, well, man, I'm excited to talk about church communications and branding. I know you have been at it for a long time and are uh, you know, an expert in the field. So why don't you tell folks a little bit about yourself, uh, You know, where you're at, how you got into church marketing and communications and branding, and uh, you know, a little bit about your journey. Sure. Well, as you we just found out as we got to to talk a little bit before this all started um it won't take very long for people to realize that i'm canadian eh? hey and i'm from east coast canada so hey, we have pick. thousands of canadian customers so they're gonna be pumped uh that's, that's awesome i feel like i should have a tim horton donut and and some tim's coffee or something like a hockey stick is that Sure, except that I'm now in Jacksonville, Florida, and we don't use hockey sticks here. <laughs> yeah, got it. Understood. Well, and I was senior creative director for one of Eastern Canada's largest ad agencies. And, uh, and as I kind of made my way to the top there, I realized all along that the church needs to know this information. And uh, so 20 years ago, which is just crazy. I, uh, I started a, a church branding agency in North Carolina and it later became uh, be known for something. And, uh, and through all of that, I started talking to a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. uh, several publications asked me to start writing some articles. So I've written over 800 published uh, magazine articles on church communication and church branding. Wow. Uh, this book be known for something uh, it's just crazy, but it's it became an Amazon bestseller, and uh, and it really walks you through the whole process of how to do church branding. Uh, we it. moved three years ago to Florida, and I became the strategic communications catalyst for the three thousand Florida Baptist churches here. Wow! But now I'm full time in in the agency in the church branding agency, be known for something. Okay. Uh, but I also am the executive director for Center for Church Communication, which is like church marketing sucks and right. creative missions and and all of those. All, all of it. So you went kind of corporate agency, created your own church agency, be known for something or to be 
called be known for something later on. And then you went back to working for the church directly when you moved. Is that when you moved out to the States or had you already come to the States? No, we moved to the States when, when I started the agency 20 years ago. Okay. That's when you got here. And then, but then you went back to working for the church. Um, wh why that shift? Well, it was interesting because, um, so the, the, the agency, uh, it was pinpoint creative group. That's why if you can see on the, on the pencil, it says pinpoint on it. Um, pinpoint creative group was started in North Carolina. We were in the, the headquarters of the Krispy Kreme world headquarters and we took yeah. over their branding department. And, and so, you know, I kind of went from, you know, big agency mindset to, okay, so I'm going to do big agency for the church and realized along the way that, uh, that a lot of churches just didn't, they weren't interested at all in marketing or in branding. Right. And that's how I, you know, I started, you know, changing my language a little bit rather than saying to a pastor, so what are you doing for branding or for marketing? And they would go branding. Well, we have a logo and they'd show me with their card with pride. Right. Um, and, or if it was marketing, it was like, no, we don't do marketing. Well, what I realized along the way was if I said, so what do you think your church is known for? Every pastor would go, well, that's an interesting question. Right. So yeah. through, through the, the, the agency in North Carolina, as we started having a lot of those discussions, um, <laughs> the crazy thing was that we ended up working entirely with really large churches. And, and the problem with that is that the ma vast majority of churches in America are a whole lot smaller than what we were working with. So we started praying about, okay, so how are we going to do this and how can I help the smaller church? And, and one of my clients was the Florida Baptist Convention. And along the way, they said, would, would you even consider coming and, and helping us with our churches? Yeah. And I had already talked to them a lot about their churches. And I knew that it was a lot of smaller churches. So it was, it was kind of that, okay, well, let's, let's try running the agency through the Florida Baptist Convention. And that way we thanks to the cooperative program of the Southern Baptists, um, everything was paid for. So I was able to work with any size church and, and ended up working with, with wow. many, many churches down there, down there. I'm here <laughs> around me. And then, um, and what's interesting about all of that was that it helped me understand and get into the mindset of the small to medium sized church. So, mm -hmm. I think it, it's really strengthened me. And now that I'm back full time with the agency, um, I, I, I'm developing products that can, can help pretty much all size churches. Um, right. And I'm, I'm trying to, to really focus on those smaller churches as well. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I love, I think at Tithely, we definitely have uh, a, a big heart for serving any size church. And in fact, you know, probably do more, to serve the smaller churches, like to make it easy to have access to some of our tools, uh, starting with the giving product where you can sign up free on the website and there's no monthly fees or anything like that. But like we did that because most churches are a hundred members, 200 members, and they don't have, you know, budget or, or uh, skill set or expertise in certain areas. So we wanted to make it accessible um, to anybody. And I love that you're kind of, like have that same heart. Like I want to be able to help any size church, you know, even the hundred member church with branding and communications. Um, Cause I think they're the ones that struggle the most, right? They're not, they're staffed for like caring for their community and pastoring the local area. And they don't have staff to put someone on full-time com communications. That's thinking about email and Facebook and YouTube and all the, all the things that almost every church was thrust into because of COVID, like they're not equipped to do that. Um, so it, it's cool. Sh like huge, you know, shout out for uh, taking care of the, the little churches too. Thank you. It, it's interesting because, you know, pastors are so busy. There, there's just so much stuff going on. You know, the 
big church pastor is incredibly busy juggling an awful lot, but the more that I've worked with smaller church pastors, they're busy doing an awful lot more than, because there's there's not that multiple staff that they can just hand things off to. And I mean, they've got, they've gone through seminary. They know the word, they know how to, you know, you know, pull a passage and, and figure out, you know, what's the outline that I need to do and how to preach. And, but the problem is, is that it's just more, so much more complex today um, in our communities because we've all, we've all become an online community where we're, you know, we're gravitating towards the internet and, and websites so that we, we kind of turn to the church and go, so why aren't you doing it? And, and the pastor who is pretty much the, the, the main person in the church mm -hmm. is saying it's because I don't know how to do it. Right. And, and that's where we love to come alongside of them and just kind of coach them how to find tidely for all of your product line. Cause, cause I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan. That's why I'm wearing my shout out. Yeah. My, my tidely t oh. Any anybody from Tither that's watching is going to be highly jealous of your uh, sweatshirt of your hoodie because it's a coveted item right there. Well, and the the interesting thing is that it's uh, it's you know with with Tithely and and the whole suite of products that you have to offer, it usually then comes back to okay, so what are you going to say? Like what what's the content that's going to be on there mm -hmm. and and what we've identified throughout the years is that um, if left to their own devices, most churches will just talk too much about too many different things mm -hmm. and, and ultimately become known for nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, just real quick, for everyone watching live, uh, super excited you're here. Um, talking with Mark McDonald of Be Known for Something. He's all about church communications and branding. Uh, like, give the show a like and even share it if you're on Facebook or YouTube right now, because we'd love to spread uh, this conversation around. Like, it's a really good one. I don't know where any of that stuff is, so I never point. I think it's right down there someplace. I'm terrible at it. I just say, spread the love, churches, because uh, Mark is an expert. And, uh, you know, we just want churches to hear about this topic. So, um, help us spread it out there. So Mark, I mean, you bring up an interesting thing, like pastors just don't know what to do. Like why do, or in your experience, do most churches not even think about marketing and communications and branding? That's something that you're like on a crusade to help them think about, but you find that they're just not, it's not part of what they do. It's not part of what they think about. Well, I guess it's kind of, you know, you, you tend to see these big churches that are doing it extremely well. Um, right. You know, they have a complete marketing staff. Every place you turn, if you're on whatever channel, you know, Twitter or Instagram or TikTok or like all of them, everywhere you are, right. that church is there. So the pastor's going, man, I guess that's what they want me to do. So right. then they... Uh, you know, how do I uh, Google? How do I sign up for TikTok? You know, that type of thing. And because they're all watching Elevation or Hillsong or right or, where it's or Life Church or any of those. It's I mean, and the and the crazy thing is, is that it looks simple because they have tons of people working on it and the content's flowing well. And and the problem is, is that you can figure out how to do all of that stuff, but, it, but it's kind of, you know, like if you, if you go over to, um, you know, uh, the Sistine Chapel and, and you walk through the doors and it's like the, the ceiling, you look up and you see Michelangelo's work and, and all of a sudden you're interrupted by this guy that's like, uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me. And I'm, it's like, yes. And he's like, do you want to buy a brush? Right. And, and it's like, uh, why do I want to buy a brush? He said, do you like what's happening on the ceiling? And it's like, uh, yes. He said, well, buy a brush. This is the brush that Michelangelo used. <laughs> and the thing is, there's a huge difference between holding onto that brush and producing the ceiling 
And, and what I have found is that most churches want that ceiling. They buy the brush mm -hmm. and then they go, so now what? Right. And, and I think that that's, it's, it's at that moment that we want to be a, you know, come as an option to say, okay, well, we can walk you through those steps to make sure that you know how to use the brush and what is the content. What does your ceiling even look like? Yeah, no, that's, that's super good. I mean, do you, do you find that churches, uh, have you seen a shift, I guess, like in churches and pastors going like, I, I actually want to think about branding and marketing. Or do you still see churches kind of go like, we're the church. Like we don't, we don't do branding and marketing. We're, we're like church. We, we preach the word. We love people. We take care of families. Like we make disciples. Like we're about that. Branding and marketing isn't us, right? We're the church. Like, is that different nowadays or, or is it, you know, still? Yeah, what, what a great question. Cause you know, um, you know, back when we first started, um, there was just a lot of confusion as to, you know, what is branding, what is marketing, right. you know, when you, you would say, well, everything's about content, 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 then the pastor's going, that's right. The word of God. Right. And it's okay. Well, you got to kind of take a step back and, and realize that, I mean, branding is essentially what are you known for? Mm -hmm. And and if you're not controlling what you're known for, you kind of give way to the perception of the community. And the, the crazy thing is, is that there's there's uh, been a big worldwide perception um, research study. And, and what they realized was when asked, what do you think of Jesus? Jesus rates really high. Like, I mean, Jesus is a cool guy. He, right. he, you know, he loved everybody and he gave us a pathway for us to follow in order to, to love everyone as well. Right. Well, then all of a sudden you switch and you say, so what do you think of the church? And church plummets. Like, I mean, it's just, it's just awful. And and, and it's a distribution problem. I mean, right. it's one of those things where we have a great product in Jesus, but people don't necessarily want to, to buy into what the church has to offer. So what we need to do is we need to, um, you know, take that step back to say, okay, so we know what the perception is. That's the main brand of being a church. If you don't control your brand, individually for your local church, then you're just going to be perceived as the, the church for everything else. Right. So, so I think that, um, you know, getting, getting, that was a long ways around to your, to answer your question, but the, to answer your question is that I think pastors understand as soon as they, they know what the definition of branding is, I think that they realize, okay, well, we need some help with that. Right. And, and the error that's happening is oftentimes, you know, similar to the way I just joked about brand, we have a logo. Well, um, I think that still there are today a lot of people that are passing off a brand as just the logo. Mm -hmm. And and I think that it's, it's, it's you know, kept a, enough confusion in the marketplace so that that pastors still don't fully get that they need a brand but in some sense, I even hate calling it a brand because everybody already has a brand, whether you're controlling right. it or not. So everyone needs a rebrand. Someone, you've just got to do a, a, a quick reset in order to be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. Much like 2021, after 2020, every church needs a reset just to try to figure out, okay, so now we know that there's a whole bunch of of changes that have just we've we've come through and everyone else has come through so how do we reset so that we really fully engage an audience and and that's that's why 2021 what a great time to do a major reset and a major rebrand for almost every church yeah how do you um what's it normally look like and hopefully people don't think this is like a sales pitch or anything, but I'm trying to unpack, like when you go to work with a church, 
what what sparks it like what gets the church to reach out to you or connect with you like what's that moment and then how do you help a church think about or go through that process of of I don't know if it's rebranding or just defining their brand and, and being purposeful about who they are and what they want to be in the community. But like, yeah, it's, just talk us through that process a little bit. I think it's, uh, you know, interesting. Well, usually they see me wearing a Tidely shirt and then <laughs> I say, okay, well, you need a rebrand. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting because um, a lot of churches call me in a time of transition. Okay. So 2020 was a major time of transition right. for everybody. But oftentimes a new pastor will come to a church and they'll go, oh, but look at the stuff. Like uh, there's nothing here to work with. We need, we need help. So then yeah. that's when they reach out to us. And, and this is kind of a rabbit trail, but um, I want to talk to a church before they hire their pastor because um, effective communication rises and falls on how well you know your audience. Mm -hmm. You know, Frank, if you don't know me from a hole in the ground, you don't know what I do. You don't like you have to ask some qualifying questions to know what we could possibly talk about for a few, uh, right. few minutes. Um, it, you know, a, a pastor who stands in the pulpit knows that he has got to connect with this group of people that are a captive audience in front of them. But the problem is, is that we've lost touch with that community that's outside of our churches. So, you know, the, the community used to birth the church and now it just exists within the community. And, and the problem is, is that when I do these mystery visits and I go in and I, you know, I, I always do a full demographic study of, of the community. I go and I expect to see the community, but it's so rare that I ever see the community within the church. It's, it's like a, a smaller subset, usually much older, and, and they've just lost that connection with their community. So an effective communication rises and falls on how well you know your audience. So, so the audience, the community, I mean, we, we have two audiences within the church, the internal and the external. Mm -hmm. The external community really should define the messaging of the church so that um, that's, you know, that's our sales pipeline. That's who God's placed our churches in. And we have to figure out how do we engage with those people. Right. Um, and, I, and I guess that the, the key is that uh, a lot of a lot of churches rely on the pastor to set the message and and it's based upon the pastor and what he wants where it's not about that at all it's about the audience and what, what they need that's why we believe that you should figure out what your thread is you know the thing that you're known for before you hire a pastor because it's based upon your audience your true audience all around you and then once you've set up that thread and you understand this is who we're all about and this is the brand promise that we're going to give to our community, then go out and find a pastor who loves it and, and wants to adopt it. And it's a whole lot easier than to hire a pastor who focuses on what he thinks is necessary and oftentimes is not um, ultimately tied to that outside audience. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's smart. Um I mean, we could, we could talk about all kinds of things. How do you think about staffing, right? So you're working with churches, depending on the size, they may or may not have somebody who's fully responsible. Um, do, you, do you come alongside churches in the journey and help them think through, you know, the kind of role they need, the type of skill sets they need, how to be able to take all the things you help them with? And then, you know, a year later or six months later, like they've got to go off and like continue to execute on this. How do they staff? How do they think about getting that work done? Oh, staffing so hard, especially with, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of churches that are, you know, have a full-time pastor and then maybe a part-time secretary or ministry assistant. Um, in order for us to, 
you know, to create a communication strategy with the church, that's a key uh, role that has to, it, it has to come in line with, so who is actually going to do this, this work for you? And if it is the pastor, there's, there's severe limitations. Um, you know, it used to be back in the day um, that your church would need just somebody who could do the bulletin. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was the bulletin and the church sign. It's like, you know, we change the church sign daily right. um, and then we do the bulletin. Well, then all of a sudden, you know, the, the person who, who figures out what to put in the bulletin well, can't you do websites? Right, the internet well, came along and <laughs> and just majorly disrupted. So, so a lot of the the ministry assistants were then tasked with, well, why don't we work with somebody to create a website? But then you can update it, right? And they think, well, I guess I can. And then the social media came along, and then all the channels came along. And then what about text messaging? And then what about this? Well, all of a sudden it was just, it's far too much for one person. And, and that's where, you know, if, if they want to talk about staffing, we don't do staffing. There's lots of great groups that, that we'd love to connect them with to help them if they're, if they're ready to start that staffing. But we also want to know what the restrictions are so that you don't create a communication strategy that's much bigger than the people that you have to be able to run it. And then if you, want to go the route of volunteers like that they talk about a rabbit trail so yeah. volunteers that's easy right i i hear it all the time well maybe maybe we shouldn't be paying somebody maybe we should just get some volunteers to do it for free which is the mantra of the church and yeah. and the problem is is that you you oftentimes have somebody in place that is not a manager and if you don't have a manager in place, there's no way that you can create a team of people that would all fall under one umbrella and actually do a great job of consistent uh, communications and branding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess even down to the basics, do you like, I guess just based on your experience, do you encourage churches to have somebody on staff who owns the, you know, and I'm thinking small, this question comes from the context of the, you know, the 200 member church, right? Um, you know, they're going to have a smaller staff, but do you just try to have them, you know, have somebody on the team that really owns this, right? And think about like, even the hiring of a person and whether it's part of their role or all of their role who just owns communications, like all things marketing communications. Yes, at a certain point, and, and I'm not sure whether it's at 200, but probably by the time you hit 300, you should have a full-time person looking after communication. And what I've, what I've seen is the partnering is like, oh, you're a student guy, you understand all that, so just do communications yeah. too. Right which is a total different mindset. Uh, then the other thing is, you know, oh, well, we need somebody to look after our media. So why don't we do media and communications? And mm -hmm. to me, that's a night and day difference as well. You know, a lot of churches see media as all communication that happens on the stage or on in your online service. Uh, and then communication is anything that happens off the stage. and and trying to engage with an audience to get them to watch what's happening on stage or our online service. Um, those, the two roles, the problem is media is a lot of running, a lot of wire and lighting yeah. and audio and haze and, and, and all that. Yeah. And, and communications is a lot about, okay, focusing on controlling your brand, controlling your messaging, controlling content, scheduling that, trying to get all, you know, everybody to have um, a voice in the church so that the people who want to receive the message can receive the message. Mm -hmm. um, most times the media guy is not thinking about it that way. He's thinking about, well, put a microphone in front of them. 
Right. And, and, and then we'll quickly start talking to you about what kind of microphone are you using? Like is, if you're using a wireless microphone and then they get into all these technical details that I don't really care about. Right. Right. Yeah. No, it, I mean, it, I, I think there's just this struggle that I've experienced and I'm by no means uh, a pro or have seen it happen with thousands of churches or anything, but it's like, yeah, they, they have to have an AV guy um, or gal that's, you know, making sure Sunday happens. Certainly there's like live stream and online stuff happening now that that AV person may be taking over. Um, you know, they've got to have, yeah, the student person or the kids ministry or whatever, but you know, this communications role gets left to like somebody to pick it up and, and it might, it might be, you know, the administrative person, or it might be, um, the pastor's wife who sends the email once in a while or right. Like it, it just ends up getting forgotten about and not, there's no emphasis on it yet. It's the thing that's all about like extending the message outside of Sunday in a lot of ways to all right to the community and onto social media and the newsletter and the website and even events you might do in the community, but all that gets left to, to nobody almost. Yeah. And everyone for some strange reason goes communication. That's easy. And, and they envision communication as someone comes up with an idea. Oh, they need that idea. So you just pass that idea along. Right. Well, you have your two audiences, internal and external. Your internal audience is your lockdown audience. They're your captive audience. They're the people who come and partake of your message on a regular basis. Every pastor knows it's difficult for them to understand one simple announcement that's given in a service. And at the end of the service, they walk out the door and say, how come you didn't talk about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have a hard enough time trying to attract and engage an audience internally. And then it's like, you know, my big message is, okay, you, if you only focus internally, you will always go into decline. Right. Like, it'll just, you know, it would be like someone saying, okay, well, Coca-Cola, I mean, Coca-Cola really only wants people who drink Coca-Cola now. We only want to talk to people who drink Coca-Cola. Well, no, they're constantly thinking, how could we can convert Pepsi drinkers to Coca-Cola drinkers? Right. Right. Yeah. And in the same sense, we have a lot of competition in the church. There's an awful lot of stuff that goes on um, in the community and they're more interested in it than what's, what's happening inside the church. If we only talk internally, which is very, very difficult to do, uh, then, then the people outside of our church will, will totally miss it. And if you think internal communications is hard, external communications is even, even tougher. Yeah. Um, but more important is not the right word, but Certainly equally important. Um, how do you help churches build a brand or build a, you know, what are they known for in the community? Like actually have a presence, like the local church, right? The, you know, the 300 member church, 400 member church in the local community. How do you help them think about really being present, being known, being part of the community? Well, first of all, they, they need to start defining who their community is. The, the joy of me working all across the country is that I get to sit down and, uh, and, and truly figure out, so what does this community look like? Mm -hmm. and, and when we do that, we want to start, I mean, here's the, the simple practical steps. It's define your reach area. So where are the people from inside where are those family units so where are they driving in from plot them on a map you can do that through uh you know your chms mm -hmm. download the chms data take it into google maps get them to plot all of those things look to see where the main clustering is you know remove all the little outliers create a polygon shape around that main group the the premise that all marketing is based on is 
that birds of a feather flock together. If, mm -hmm. if your if your community, your internal community is coming from a particular area in your external community, those the people that live around them are probably um, uh, responsive to your messaging as in the same way that those families came in. Right. So define that, that reach area, get a solid demographic study of that reach area. Uh, there's, there's lots of groups that do it. I mean, we help, um, you know, do, do those demographics and then, or even go to your chamber of commerce. Like if you just say, okay, so here's the area of town that we're in. Can you help us define who lives here? And then you want to look for needs, concerns, and goals in the external audience. Mm. And then once you have needs, concerns, and goals, what solutions do we have that would meet or it could be staged so that they it appears to meet the needs or concerns or it becomes a path to some of those goals? And then the more you focus externally and then you bring the internal audience along to say, okay, so who is our community? You know what? You know what we found out this week about our community and sharing it with them? Yeah. It's, it's then partnering the message that Jesus said of, so are we going and telling, and are we going to communicate, uh, you know, externally around us, or are we going to um, just focus internally? And I think almost every church goes, well, it's a no brainer. But it's interesting. I so I was just in in Tennessee this past weekend doing focus groups because part of our investigation is to investigate internally. So why did people come to your church originally? What keeps them here and what do they perceive as the reason why some people are leaving? Right. So I was having that that uh, conversation with this church and uh, and one of the one of the members in one of our focus groups said, you know, it's kind of funny, but I will go on a missions trip and I'll tell somebody in China all about Jesus, but I won't walk across the street to tell my neighbor. Right. And therein lies the rub. I think that we've lost sight of our own community around us. And so effective communication rises and falls in how well you know your audience. So get to know that audience and share the the external audience information with your internal audience. And, and Jesus said, when the disciples were all around him and, and they looked at him and said, so what will we be known for? That's kind of a loose translation. And, uh, and Jesus said, oh, they'll know you're my disciples by our love. love. Yep. And the thing is, is that we're not only just to know our audience, know who our community is, but we need to fall in love all over again with our, our external audience. Most pastors love their internal audience, but we need to, to set our internal audience on fire so that they love their communities. Yeah, and that's I mean, done through it, branding. Yeah, it's, it's funny because I think some of it is like, look, it's so simple right jesus calls us to love god and love our neighbor um and our by our love for one another like people are gonna know right but so it's very simple but there's like practical things we can do that that help the church like do that well and help spread that message and help make an impact in the community and to me that's the marketing and branding and communication side of thing is not trying to do weird gimmicky things. It's, it's just getting good at that, yeah, knowing your community, figuring out what your community's needs are and trying to be a church that, you know, is the light in that community and loving the people of that community. Um, but being really good at, you know, people knowing who you are and what you're all about. And that's marketing and communication, you know, at its finest. Um, but it's just, it just seems challenging for churches to, figure that out. So I think it's cool what you're doing. Yeah. And I think that oftentimes we want to be uh, something for everyone. The larger churches can do that a whole lot easier than the smaller churches. Right. Instead, right. what I would challenge the smaller church to do is, okay, so what's a major concern or a major goal in our external audience? 
-hmm. And then how can we focus on one solution over and over and over again and control it so that we become known for it mm -hmm. so that the people in our, in our community, they will start hearing it over and over again, either, you know, through door to door witnessing or flyers or your sign or just um, word of mouth where the, the community says to their neighbor, well, our church is all about this. And, and that will break through what we call that thread. That thread then has to unite everything you do from, um, from nursery ministry all the way up to through seniors ministry so that you all become about that thread so that you become a branded house rather than a house of a whole bunch of brands. Mm -hmm. And, and the more you can figure out what your lane is and that lanes based upon a need in the community, you'll become known for something relevant and needed right. so that you, maybe everybody in your community might not want church right now, but at a certain point in time, they go, you know what? I, I need that. And I didn't expect to get it from a church, but that's what I'm going for. Right. And, and I think that oftentimes our mission and vision and values and all of those things that are just overly spiritual um, oftentimes are the things that we lead with and our community rejects them because they're not looking for something spiritual instead. Exactly. They need practical. Exactly. Exactly. They need something else and that's what we need to become known for. And then it's just a matter of connecting that with the message of Christ. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, man, this has been awesome. We could keep talking for plenty of time. Uh, when, when did the book come out? Book came out, whoa, uh, almost four years ago now. Really? Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Um, still on Amazon? It is. And uh, and if you want, if a church wants to, to lead through the book where they have several leadership um, groups that want to go through it, the book's set up so that it has questions and answers at the, at the end of every chapter. Yeah. Uh, and that you can buy packages of those books at be known book.com. Love it. Be known book.com. I'm sure someone will put it in the comments too. Uh, Mark, this has been great, man. Thank you for taking uh, an hour or so out of your day to come share with everybody. My pleasure. I love what you guys are doing. Keep doing it. Yeah, we will, man. Um, everybody definitely go check out Mark's book. Uh, be known for something.com. Is that right? All right, cool. The book's at benomebook.com or go to benomeforsomething.com and then you just click on the book tab. You'll find it there too. Um, very cool. Guys, thanks for joining us today. We had a ton of uh, chat and comments going on. So appreciate you guys. Hopefully you picked up some great tips and we'll be back with you next week, same time. Thanks everybody.